So the House has passed a war powers resolution uh, effectively denying uh, President Trump the right to uh, start a war with Iran. Now, this does seem kind of silly if you understand how the uh, you know constitutional war powers works. It's pretty explicit uh, in the Constitution that only Congress has the power to make war. And so therefore, you, it's kind of silly for them to pass a resolution, you would think, saying, well, the president isn't allowed to, to make war in this case because that sort of you know gives the impression that in any case where Congress does not specifically condemn the president, he can make war. And frankly, um, I think that the, the whole War Powers Act back when it was passed in the 70s after the Vietnam War, uh, it was more of a compromise because by that point Congress realized that they had lost their war-making powers and that the president had usurped them. Um, and they didn't want to, uh, I guess, take it back entirely, even though the Constitution makes it pretty clear they're the only ones with that right. So they came up with the War Powers Act, which... Uh, essentially gave the, the president a lot more latitude uh, in terms of what the statutes were. Uh, but then, you know, it felt Congress felt like they had somewhere where they could step in and, uh, and intervene if they thought the president was getting out of hand. And of course, uh, you know, famously, something that people really don't think about anymore is that, well, the president can start a war, but he has to get congressional approval within 90 days. Um, and that was supposed to you know, be a, a sort of an adaptation. Frankly, it should have been a, a, an amendment to the Constitution because the idea is, is that, well, modern warfare is, is much quicker than it used to be. And so uh, you want to have the president the ability uh, to act quickly uh, because it's not it's not like things used to be back in the, the uh, 18th or 19th centuries to where it, it took many weeks for troops to mobilize and Congress had the opportunity to meet and debate a uh, declaration of war before any hostilities broke out. And so, you know, in principle, the 90-day rule is not crazy or anything like that, but we've gone far beyond that. Uh, nobody cares about that anymore. Now, Obama kind of used the 90-day justification in the Libya war because his whole thing was, well, I don't need congressional authorization because I'll be done in Libya within 90 days, which is true as far as the overt war was concerned. Uh, the actual, uh, you know, full-on military campaign uh, was within that 90-day span, but of course the covert war uh, just like all the covert wars that the U.S. wages around the world, uh, has gone on for years. Good example is the Yemen War, which the U.S. has been involved with for certainly well over 90 days, quite a few years at this point, uh, and in which Congress uh, d did pass a, a binding war powers resolution uh, opposing uh, in last year, I believe it was. Uh, which was a pretty remarkable thing. Um, you know, Congress doesn't often doesn't often do that, uh, but the Yemen war has gotten so horrible uh, that they actually uh, decided to to make their voices heard. But of course, that had no effect on the president. Uh, president Trump did not stop uh, waging the Yemen war. Uh, he has not let up, and nobody's really said anything about it since the resolution was passed. I mean, frankly, if the Democrats, as I've said before, if they wanted to impeach President Trump. That would have been a pretty good thing to, to – those would have been pretty good grounds for impeachment. I mean he is waging an illegal war. Of course, they didn't want to do that because, of course, what would be Obama, what would be Trump's defense? Well, Obama started it, and that would be very difficult for the Democrats politically. So they couldn't impeach him for that even though he, he went out and violated uh, the War Powers Resolution and went against Congress's wishes. But here we are. Uh, on the eve of potentially another war, war that, I, like I've said in the past, I don't think is going to happen. And uh, thankfully, over the last couple of days, things have calmed down, and I think uh, I am being proven right. Uh, I was a little worried there for a bit that I that Trump would prove me wrong, uh, to where I said that there could be that there was no possibility of war with Iran until uh, we were closer to the election this summer specifically. But you know, t tensions have uh, been ratcheted down a little bit. And so I think we're pretty safe. But it is good that Congress is going to pass this resolution preemptively uh, in case that there is another um, flare-up in tensions like this, which I'm sure there will be again. Uh, and like I said, the danger for that really comes uh, in the summer uh, before the election, depending on how Trump, President Trump looks like he's doing. So if they pass this ahead of time, even if Trump in the future decides that he would like to go with war with Iran, it will technically be illegal. And the question then becomes, you know, will Congress do anything about it? If Trump violates this resolution and starts a war with Iran, are they going to try and impeach him in the middle of a war? Or will the propaganda and war fervor uh, in the country uh, sufficiently push the, uh, the Democrats into capitulating? Frankly, I don't think that will be the case. If Trump tries to wage his illegal war um, against Iran after this resolution passes, 
Um, which, again, it, it's still questionable whether this is going to pass the Senate or not, but I'll get to that in a minute. But assuming it passes the, the Senate now that it's passed the House – um, and, and Trump does violate it. I think that the Republicans, you'll probably see a, a, a co- a, Republicans begin to coalesce around Trump and Democrats, you know, even though the Republicans perhaps who are more anti-war. Uh, and the Democrats, even the ones who are, so, who are pro-war, will coalesce you know, against Trump because it's Trump, and it will become a partisan issue. And so I don't think that we'll have, like in the case of other wars, uh, this thing where the country is united. I think that a, a war with Iran uh, happening this year would probably be the first war uh, that really divided uh, Americans uh, you know, from the beginning, um, and probably more so than Vietnam. Because I don't believe that the divide over the Vietnam War was such a partisan one. Uh, Lyndon Johnson was a uh, uh, was a Democrat, and uh, Richard Nixon was a Republican, and they both, you know, to, even though Nixon ran on getting out of Vietnam and eventually did, uh, he still continued the war to uh, uh, for some time. And there were uh, plenty of Republicans when uh, Johnson was president who supported the war. There were plenty of Democrats who opposed it. And, you know, on its face, I mean, the same is true, would be true now, in, you know, in principle. If you ask someone, if you did a poll of Americans, said, hey, you think Iran war is a good idea, um, you would get folks from both sides uh, saying yes and no. Uh, but I think when it comes down to it, people are going to rally around their tribe. And it helps that, you know, um, Republican voters are uh, historically um, pretty uh, uh, well-tuned uh, to love war. And so even if they've been a little less uh, – they've been a bit war fatigued lately um, because of the failures of Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, it probably won't take too much to get 95 uh, percent of Republicans on board with another war. Now, despite that, however, there were some Republicans uh, who did vote in favor of this resolution in the House. Uh, the uh, two most notable ones that I saw were Matt Gates and Thomas Massey. Now, Thomas Massey, you would expect, uh, you know, he's supposed to, he's kind of the the last remaining uh, old uh, Ron Paul libertarian type of uh, guy in the House. Um, of course, there's also Justin Amash, but Justin Amash has uh, tried to appeal more to. I don't know what he's going for lately. Uh, he's a different kind of guy, and of course he's not a Republican anymore, so I wouldn't really even count him. But um, uh, the other one that was kind of surprising for some people was Matt Gates, and Matt Gates is a big-time MAGA guy. Okay, he uh, he campaigned uh, in favor of Trump very heavily. Uh, he was a uh, he was on the campaign trail for uh, you know the current Florida governor Ron DeSantis when he was running. Uh, he was all over TV constantly defending Trump. Uh, for his first couple of years, and that's where he really gained a lot of prominence. Uh, and of course, he's from the uh, fairly um, uh, conservative and, and, and very red uh, Florida panhandle. And so you'd think if there was somebody who would back Trump on every last issue, it would be Matt Gates. But Matt Gates does apparently have his own principles. He does have his own beliefs, and uh, he is very boldly uh, challenging the president on this issue and is making it very abundantly clear that, uh, hey, <laughs> we spent a lot of enough time in the Middle East, enough people have died, and uh, no, no to one, we don't need one more war in the Middle East. Uh, a war with Iran would be disastrous. And I, I have to give him a lot of props for having the courage to say that. There is a, uh, a good uh, collection of essays that was edited by Tom Woods, and I forget who the, who the other guy was. He was some left-wing professor, and it was – the title of it was Those Who Dare to Say No to War, which I think was a great title because really you do have to be quite daring in this country to say no to any war uh, when it's being promoted at a given time. Now, of course, you know, 15, 20 years down the road after the war happens, everyone is against it, and it becomes conventional wisdom that you know the Vietnam War was a bad idea, the Iraq War was a bad idea. Soon, I'm sure there are going to be people who say that the Afghan War uh, was itself a bad idea. But what really takes a lot of courage is to oppose it at the time, and that's what Matt Gates is doing, despite uh, you know his, his risking his reputation as that real red-blooded MAGA-type Republican. But frankly, he's someone who seems to have actually bought into the Trump message because uh, some folks might remember that uh, a big part of Trump's campaign and the whole you know, MAGA thing uh, versus traditional republicanism uh, was that the, the idea that, hey, <laughs> we've shed enough blood in the Middle East. And it wasn't uh, – you know, the, the, uh, the Trump anti-war attitude uh, was uh, not uh, you know, some bleeding heart left wing uh, out of care – for the civilian population in the Middle East or anything like that. It was purely uh, pragmatic um, when, and uh, you know, American-centric because it was saying, hey, you know, Americans have lost enough in the Middle East. 
And that was a message that uh, resonated with the American right. But sadly, uh, now that uh, you know the the uh, the magatarians have, uh, if you can call them that, or the MAGA servatives, or I don't know, I shouldn't make up dumb terms like that. But anyway, uh, once these folks you know come to Washington, uh, they tend to throw most of that out the window and became just uh, you know uh, plumb line party loyalists. Or at least that's that was the idea. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, it was pretty funny. Uh, Lou Dobbs, uh, the, uh, the you know one of the uh, the top Trump defenders on television, uh, is very popular amongst the Trump supporters. Uh, was out there on TV, uh, just calling everyone who voted in favor of this resolution just a terrible namby pamby, uh, lefty, uh, bad Republican, not a not a real conservative. And he had of all people Kevin McCarthy on uh, to make that point for him. And and uh, um, Kevin McCarthy had the gall. Uh, him of all people, uh, a California Republican, to say that uh, this resolution was only supported by Democrats and rhinos. Somehow, in this in this crazy backwards world that Lou Dobbs is living in, uh, Matt Gates is a rhino and Kevin McCarthy isn't. But I guess when you specialize in trying to propagandize the American people and and get them excited uh, for more death and destruction, uh, you. Don't really, you can't really rely on logic because that's not a logical thing to get excited and happy about. So your only recourse then really is to tell lies and try to make things seem uh, like like up is down and down is up. So we'll have to see where this goes in the Senate. Um, I know Mike Lee and Rand Paul, at least uh, after that intelligence briefing, are going to very eagerly uh, vote for Tim Kaine's War Powers Resolution. Um, I'm not sure if there will be any other Republicans that will join them. Uh, there probably, I'm sure, there will be at least a couple Democrats that vote against the War Powers Resolution. There were like six or seven Democrats that voted against it in the House. Um, typically, uh, Democrats that have a little more ties to the military-industrial complex, folks that live in districts uh, where there is a big military base, of course, because of course because um, uh, you will get more funding if the president has more latitude to do more stuff with the wars and things. Uh, so that's a uh, Another good example of how uh, following the money uh, can really show you where how political decisions are made in Washington. But like I said, the Senate probably will be even worse. Um, Democrats in the Senate, you know, they're supposed to be the more mature kinds of people, the, the folks who are more serious politicians, uh, you know, the statesmen. Uh, you know, the Senate is supposed to be all oh, the most uh, uh, the most highly revered deliberative body in the world, and so that means that you have to love war. So I don't have too high hopes of uh, of this passing the Senate. Um, although who knows? I mean, the Yemen thing got through, um, so who knows? Maybe maybe this will, will slip through old Mitch McConnell's fingers. But uh, frankly, uh, he's a he's a wily old sucker, and uh, if he doesn't want something passed, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to uh, pri pretty hard to imagine how it will be. So with that said, if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day, and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.